I got a comment under one of my videos. Somebody wanted to know about methylation. What is the methylation process and how does that affect the body? How does it affect those involved in bodybuilding, fitness, sports, and so on and so forth? Methylation is basically a simple biochemical process. It's at the transfer of four atoms, one carbon atom, and three hydrogen atoms from one substance to another. Among the many processes in the body affected by methylation are DNA production, synthesis of histamine, the production of neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, and others, the metabolism of estrogen, in other words, uh, methyl groups are needed to degrade estrogen, eye health, fat metabolism, energy production, and liver health. In the liver, a lack of sufficient methyl groups leads to an accumulation of fat in the liver that can lead to cirrhosis and eventual liver failure. There are two types of uh, fatty liver. One of them is uh, usually caused by excessive consumption of alcohol. The other one uh, is uh, usually caused by excessive co uh, consumption of refined sugars, fructose, and so on and so forth, with a lack, uh, combined with a lack of phys physical activity. That's called non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, and uh, either one of those can uh, eventually lead to cirrhosis, which is a formation of excess scar tissue in the liver that can eventually lead to either liver failure or cancer of the liver. Methyl groups are also important for the de detoxification functions of the liver. Ingesting larger, for example, uh, when you ingest larger doses of anabolic steroids, you can, de you can deplete both methyl groups and glutathione, which is an endogenous antioxidant produced in the body. You can deplete them through the use of uh, uh, large amounts of uh, all anabolic steroids. When that happens, what happens is the steroids uh, tend to accumulate in the liver, causing a type of swelling of the liver or chemical hepatitis. That, in turn, kind of squeezes the bile ducts. Bile is produced in the liver. It's transported through the ducts to the gallbladder. And if, they, and if they bile cannot circulate through the liver properly due to inflammation, it causes a condition called cholestasis, which is very common in, in people who use high oral doses of, of uh, antibiotic steroids, especially for extended times. And that can lead to jaundice and other obvious liver problems, ele very highly elevated liver enzymes, and so on and so forth. An important role of uh, methylation involves the turning on and off of various genes. Uh, this is called epigenetics. For years, it was thought that, uh, bio that uh, biology is destiny. In other words, uh, your genes determine uh, when you would get certain diseases like cancer and heart disease, how long you would live, and so on and so forth. Genes are still heavily involved in longevity, meaning that if you don't have the genes, certain genes for longevity, you're not going to make it to over 100 no matter what you do. However, other genes can be controlled by what you eat and uh, how you uh, live your life. Uh, this process of being able to uh, control the genes through environmental measures is known as epigenetics. And uh, methylation uh, plays an important role in epigenetics because you can control the extent of methylation in your body through nutrition. And uh, like I say, uh, most of the methyl groups produced in the body are derived from something called S-adenosyl methionine, which is also known as SAMI. SAMI, in turn, is produced largely from the methylated form of folic acid, which is called methylfolate. Uh, that's the activated form of folic acid. Uh, folate uh, is one of the few supplements that is actually absorbed better in supplement form than it is in food, as folic acid in food, because folic acid has to be converted into folate. And folate, in turn, has to have a methyl group added to it, where it becomes methylfolate, methylfolate. But the methylfolate actually is the precursor for SAMI, so they all kind of tie in together. Unfortunately, about 50 to 60 percent of the people in the United States have a genetic mutation in the enzyme that converts folate into methylfolate. So consequently, they have to take a preformed methylfolate supplement, which is easily available. You can get it in, by, and methylfolate, by the way, is the activated form of, uh, of, of uh, fol folate anyway. What happens if you don't have uh, adequate methyl methylation in the body? Well, if you do, the following substances are gonna, not going to be produced adequately. This includes glutathione, which is a major endogenous antioxidant, especially in the liver. Uh, among other things, it helps, again, helps to detoxify anabolic steroids that accumulate in the liver. Coenzyme Q10, melatonin. Uh, serotonin, which is a neural brain, uh, neurotransmitter in the brain, nitric oxide, norepinephrine, catecholamine, uh, epinephrine, which is, uh, again, a catecholamine uh, involved in the uh, release of fat from fat cells, stimulates an enzyme called 
hormone-sensitive lipase, which catalyzes stored triglycerides and, and lipocytes of fat cells into its component free fatty acids and glycerol. And if you exercise, you burn up the free fatty acids. And that's how you basically oxidize fat. Uh, you need uh, uh, methyl groups to produce L-carnitine. You need to produce the sulfur-containing amino acid cysteine and, and, and the uh, sulfur-containing amino acid taurine. There are certain foods that favorably influence methylation because they contain folate, folate and other substances. These include asparagus, avocado, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, green leafy vegetables and legumes such as peas, beets, and lentils, rice also. Nutrient, there's a couple of nutrients that also favor the formation of methyl groups. These include the activated form of uh, folate, which is, again, methylfolate, methylcobalamin, which is the active form of B12, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, uh, which is the activated form of vitamin B6. You'll see a lot of uh, pyridoxal 5-phosphate uh, in supplements, but that's kind of silly because when you ingest it, the phosphate uh, portion is cleaved off and it just becomes pyridoxing again, and the body adds its phosphate to it. So there's no advantage to ingesting pyridoxal 5-phosphate orally. Same for another nutrient called uh, riboflavin 5-phosphate, which is also involved. Uh, that activates the enzyme that converts folate into methylfolate, which is important, of course, for the pro promotion, uh, production of methyl groups. Magnesium activates 300 enzymes in the body. It's also involved in the production of methyl groups. Betaine, also known as trimethylglycine, also provides methyl, uh, is important for the, uh, uh, the formation of methyl groups. It provides methyl donors, what they call methyl donors, which are needed for the production of uh, methyl groups in the body. And vitamin D is the activated form of 25-hydrocholocalciferol. Uh, 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 what are the signs that you might need methylation support? If you have excessive fatigue, a family history of cardiovascular disease, family history of anxiety and depression, poor mood, difficulty concentrating, chronic constipation, issues with inflammation. If you have elevated homocysteine, homocysteine is a byproduct of the uh, metabolism of the essential amino acid methionine. It's considered a toxic uh, byproduct. It's involved in the, uh, on, uh, the onset of cardiovascular disease and brain degeneration. Uh, one molecule that has been of tremendous interest lately, especially people interested in anti-aging, uh, is what they call NAD, which stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. There's a couple of supplements that are, are precursors for NAD. NAD is involved in everything. You can check on the videos. It's involved in DNA uh, uh, stability, energy production, mitochondria, blah, 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 everything. It's uh, a key to life. Let me put it this way. If you were to have all the NAD disapp uh, disappear in your body, you'd be dead in six seconds. Um, <laughs> it's like, and, and, uh, it's again crucial for DNA repair, cellular bioenergetics, uh, maintenance of gene signaling and cell survival. Uh, as you age, unfortunately, the body produces less NAD. This is where the supplements like nic nicotinamide, riboside, and NMR come into a play. They uh, are supposed precursors for NAD. Uh, the studies go back and forth on that. Uh, some of the latest studies on NR and nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside uh, aren't very favorable. They, they, it didn't seem to do anything as far as NAD goes. But uh, the, the important point here is if you use these supplements, they tend to use up methyl groups in the body. So you need to supplement a methyl donor. A popular one to do so is betaine trimethylglycine. The dose would be about 2 grams a day. It'll give you the methyl groups that are used up because the body uses a lot of methyl groups to metabolize nicotinamide, which is found in both of those supplements. As our body synthesizes uh, NAD, methylation uh, activity increases, as I said, blah, blah, blah. Uh, meth methylation also affects tel 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 telomeres, which are the ends of chromosomes as, as the telomeres uh, short, as the, as the telomeres um, get depleted, the uh, shorten, I should say, the chromosomes start to basically, it gets to the point where they turn off and the and cell goes into senescence, which is a Basically, uh, just a cell that sits there and reduces infl uh, uh, produce inflammatory chemicals, which tend to shorten the lifespan. So you want to maintain telomeres, and methylation helps to do that. Uh, what's the common symptoms? Uh, now, looking at it from the other perspective, can you be overmethylated? In other words, so what happens if you have too much uh, methylation? Well, some of the symptoms for that, according to various sources, include paranoia, depression. Uh, believe it or not. I know it sounds funny, you get more creative. I guess it's because it affects the right side of the brain, so 
people who are over methylated tend to be more artistic and have greater musical ability. Uh, they, they tend to have upper body, neck, and head pain. They have more uh, body hair. Men, uh, men and women, chest and facial. Food chemical sensitivity, sleep disorders, adverse reaction to estrogen therapy, adver uh, adverse reaction to antihistamines. They do better when they take the benzodiazepine drugs like Xanax. They tend to involve be involved in self mutilation. This one says tattoos. I don't know if you want to call that self mutilation. Some people would kind of object to that. Uh, adverse reaction to uh, to uh, uh, certain antidepressant drugs. Low motivation. High pain threshold. Uh, high anxiety. Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, people who are over methylated tend to also be low in histamine, uh, and a lot of these symptoms are. It's called histopenia. It was, uh, the idea was first formulated by a psychiatrist named Carl Pfeiffer in the early 60s. Um, uh, and histamine is, uh, low histamine produces, uh, when, when there's too much methylation, you get a low histamine uh, reaction, which produces a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, Overmethylated persons in the general population tend to be very passionate individuals and often self-sacrificing. This is what the psychiatrist said. These individuals may be attracted to professions or hobbies in music and the arts, theater, acting, social services, or causes and philosophy. Often they may be viewed as underachievers. However, they are best characterized as individuals who tend to march to the beat of their own drum. Overmethylation, as I said, is also called histopenia, and the treatment program consists of the administration of high doses of zinc, manganese, vitamin C, niacinamide, B12, and and uh, folate, especially methylfolate. Uh, you, uh, one of the hallmarks of overmethylation is high levels of copper, which is very bad for you in many ways because it can be a pro-oxidant. Uh, it's linked to uh, Alzheimer's, uh, excess copper, free copper in the brain. It's linked to Alzheimer's and, Par and Parkinson's disease. So you want to reduce high blood uh, copper, which is frequently found in people with overmethylation. Uh, what causes overmethylation? Very often it's related to uh, a lot of exposure to environmental toxins, high histamine intake, uh, high estrogen levels, acute or chronic stress, and chronic infection or immune challenges. So that's about it. I give you the basics of methylation, both low and high. Uh, I gave you the uh, nutrients that will help support methylation. Uh, I gave you things to watch out for. And that's all I'm going to give you <laughs> about methylation. It's a pretty complex topic. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise, science, anti-aging research that you can use today, uh, supplement science, uh, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, women's health and fitness. Uh, uh, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, 40 to 50 pages every month. No ads, just pure information based on current science and my own 58 years of, of constant study and experience, which can't be matched by anyone else. Uh, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you uh, when you uh, uh, subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page. However, Facebook just changed, uh, where it's much harder for me to add people to that private group. So if you want to join, you have to first send me a, a, a invite to join my regular Facebook uh, uh, group uh, I'll, I'll, you know, as a friend. And once you're a, a friend on my Facebook group, I can add you to the private group. Uh, you, I, other, other than that, I, for some stupid reason, I don't know why, I can't add unless you do that. Uh, current subscribers, I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics um, uh, f uh, webpage. You're welcome to ask me short questions pertaining to uh, anything I write in Applied Metabolics or maybe short questions on something that's not related to subjects uh, I cover in uh, Applied Metabolics. But as long as they're short questions and you're a current, subscri you're a current subscriber, I will answer you. Uh, you're also welcome to leave uh, comments under this video. Uh, I will read the good ones, ignore the bad ones. <laughs> and uh, I can't guarantee I'll answer them. I always answer questions submitted to me by current subscribers, but not often for uh, comments under the videos. I just don't have the time. So I kind of rushed through this video because uh, there's something wrong with my uh, with my uh, my uh, video thing. Not not the not the camera, but my screen. Uh, when I tried to make this video earlier, the screen just went out, so it's failing on me. So I'm, I kind of rushed through this video, and, and uh, you know, the original video was about twice as long. But I'm sure you people 
that don't like my longer videos will appreciate the fact that this is a little bit shorter. It's about 15 minutes now, so I'm going to stop. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.